so by the time you're watching this it will probably be a week or so later than when I'm filming it right now. It is actually Wednesday the 9th of November on the evening and tomorrow I am taking in Twig for an operation to spay her. The reason being is that Twiggy here has been diagnosed with ovarian cysts and if you know anything about ovarian cysts, firstly they're very common in guinea pigs and Twiggy pretty much has all the symptoms that you can get. And these include hair loss which started on her sides but now is pretty much everywhere. She is a lot more agitated and dominant than she used to be. She's also losing weight and her weight is more distributed around her back end than on her front. So she's quite thin and bony around her shoulders and her ribs. And lastly she also has the enlarged slightly crusty nipples which can be another symptom as well. So we're pretty sure that Twiggy has ovarian cysts and they're not the usual cysts which are actually on the outside of the tissue surrounding the ovary which can get really really big. The vet thinks that they're small cysts inside the ovary but because they're inside the ovary they're pumping out lots of hormones and causing all these changes and all these symptoms. So the decision to take a surgical treatment is not one I've taken lightly. There are various treatment options that people can take. Obviously the one that is going to solve the problem and stop it ever coming back is a spay operation which basically if you don't know what it is it is taking out the ovaries and the uterus and any cysts along with that which also means that they can't ever develop ovarian cysts or have any problems with their uterus such as tumours or uterine cancer in the future. I've decided to go with this option because it's what my vet recommends. I've done a lot of reading on the forums about people's experiences with the spay operation and I know that guinea pigs aren't the best candidates for surgery but I think in Twiggy's case she's gotten a better chance than normal of being okay with the surgery and I'm really hoping and praying that everything will go okay with her. So I'm taking her into the vets tomorrow and hopefully picking her up the same day and uh, you will come along with me and uh, just kind of to give people a better idea of what is needed and what's to be expected when you're taking a guinea pig in for surgery. Hello again everyone. So today is Friday the 11th of November. Twiggy had her spay operation yesterday and she has just come home. It is a, probably about nine o'clock at night now. She's been home for um, a little over an hour, I think. The surgery wasn't quite as planned. It was a bit more difficult than a normal spay, just for the reason that her ovaries were quite deep and um, her uterus was quite big as well um, which kind of was because basically she was always in heat she, she was just constantly hormonal and that kind of made the uterus more enlarged than it usually is so it was a bit of a tricky operation and um, it was later in the day than the vet planned as well so um, I was actually on a course in Leeds trying to concentrate <laughs> waiting for my mobile phone to go off and uh, when I spoke to the vet it was about five o'clock and because I was in Leeds and that's where the vets is I had the chance to go and visit her um, she'd already told me that she wanted to keep her in overnight but I was so happy that I got the chance to go and see her and kind of see where she would be set up overnight um, you know how hear how they were going to be looking after her and things like that everything I saw at the vets was really positive I saw her in her little kennel with everything around her um, and it was pretty much just not long after she'd woken up that I saw her and she was having a munch at some veggies which the vet said was a really good sign so um, I was really pleased about that and then today, Friday, I have been at work all day waiting for the moment when I could go home so that I could pick Twiggy up from the vets and that's what I've done now and as you can see this is her little cage that she is set up in and it's basically a couple of CNC grids slotted in the main cage with the other piggies so that she give me close to them but they can't bother her too much and she's got everything she needs in here so she's got hay, her pellets, a water bottle, she's got a snuggle sack with a heat pad underneath it because it's quite important to keep guinea pigs warm when they're recovering and she's also got a new um, little carrot house that I got them, the others have actually been chewing at it from the other side of the bars which has been quite funny. So uh, when I saw Twiggy at the vets and when I kind of um, brought her home I was a bit like oh she doesn't look very well at all um, but this is kind of to be expected. They are quite lethargic, they're kind of you know they're recovering from a major surgery, um, their eyes look a bit dry and crusty and they don't really move around much 
but the most important thing is that they are eating and that they are pooping and weeing, which Twiglet is doing all of those things. I know she doesn't look to be doing much at the moment, but she has been. So I decided I would get her a bit of grass out the garden, which she was been chomping on. And then I did give her a bit of critical care just because I thought, oh, let's get some extra fibre into her. I know that she probably hadn't been eating much on the uh, car journey on the way back, so we did that. I put her back in the cage in the main part and uh, she actually had a good wander round. She actually jumped over the plastic to get into the box instead of going through the hole and I was like, ah, piggy! But she seemed okay, she started snuffling around and eating lots of hay. Um, the other two didn't bother her but I decided I would put her back in here. I think she just probably needs to rest for a bit and that's why she's looking a bit hunched and a bit tired there at the moment. So we'll just zoom in on her. Hi darling. Oh I know, you're so grumpy. So this is kind of what to expect when you bring them home. They're very kind of down in the dumps. Um, but yeah, as I said, as long as they're eating or you're syringe feeding them and they are weeing and pooing, that's all good signs. Um, and I'm just hoping that she continues to recover and doesn't take a turn for the worse. So I am pretty on edge at the moment. I just want her to be okay. everyone so it's lunchtime the next day now and uh, Twiggy has been okay overnight um, as you can see she's tucking into some radicchio right now so she, she's enjoying that she's not really gone for many other veggies besides that and um, parsley and a bit of fresh grass that I've given her she's not been keen on the lettuce or carrots or peppers she's had a tiny bit of celery um, but she really seems to be loving that she's had quite a bit of that so that's good um, she's also been eating hay on and off. She has had quiet periods where she's just been resting and, and not doing anything. And um, it's when that happens that you get really worried and you start thinking, oh, should I pester them and make them get up and make them eat something? But sometimes I think, you know, if it's only for an hour or so, then they're best left to rest. Um, I've been trying to, you know, not interfere too much with Twiggy because I know um, she got on fine at the vets and they probably weren't, you know, um, picking her up and force feeding her all the time. One thing I have been doing though is just to kind of reintroduce her to the others as well um, but also just so that she does like have a little walk about is I have been putting her in here and I've noticed that as soon as I've lifted her in she's done a wee and she's done poos and she's been eating her poos and it just seems funny it's like um, maybe she just needs to have a little toddle about and kind of get that movement going which then makes her poo. Um, so I have been doing that and the others have been having a good sniff at her and, and she's been going in there and eating some hay but I have kept her in here. Um, I don't really want her jumping over the, um, the hay box again like she did last time. Um, so I think she's kind of more comfortable in here and she's got her heat pad and everything. She does seem brighter today um, but kind of similar-ish really. Um, so hopefully it's just going to be a case of like slowly improving over time but we'll see won't we little piggy. Hi everyone, so one last update for you on this video. It is now about three and a bit weeks since Twiglet had her operation and I am very pleased to say that she has recovered really well. It probably took just over a week in all. Um, her symptoms to do with the ovarian cysts are improving or they've gone away completely so I'm really happy with that. If you've been following the updates since the operation then you'll know that I had a problem when I tried to properly reintroduce Twiglet to the other two. It resulted in Lyra having a big bite on her lip and unfortunately I have had to keep Twiglet separate because of that. Um, I'm not sure whether I will be able to reintroduce them at all to be honest but we'll see how it goes. But in terms of the operation and the recovery I'm really glad that I went for that option and I'm really happy that Twiglet has recovered well. I do want to do a summary video on what things you should consider when you're thinking about putting your guinea pig through an operation when maybe there are other treatment options available to you. So um, look out for that video, it's going to be kind of um, less vloggy so hopefully you can kind of extract more information from it easily. But in the meantime, thank you so much for watching this video. Please comment below if there's anything that you didn't know that you found really useful because I could use that in the upcoming video. Um, but yes, that is all for this one. So 
Twiglet's it's had enough. <laughs> That's bye from me and bye from Twiglet. Bye bye.